broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar uh, on adult learner leadership. My name is Nicole, and I'm the Education and Training Coordinator for the Florida Literacy Coalition, Florida's Adult and Family Literacy Resource Center. Um, this webinar is made possible through the generous support of the Florida Department of Education, Division of Career and Adult Education. Um, before we begin, I want to just show you some of your uh, webinar tools. So if you look on your control panel to your right, you'll see a red arrow key. If you press that red arrow key, you'll be able to dock your control panel and um, kind of take it away from the screen. Just press it again to bring your control panel back out. All right. So um, the next I want you to look on your control panel to a section that says questions. So um, the question box is where you're going to put any questions you have for the presenters or any technical issues that you have. If you have, if you're having some kind of a technical issue, if you type it in there, I'll be able to answer you privately on the questions box. If you have a question relating to content, I will uh, go through and read those to the presenters at designated times. Um, so if you don't hear your question being read right away, um, it will be read at a designated time with other questions or at the end. All right, um, now if you'll direct your attention to the handouts section on your control panel, you'll see that you have two handouts there. One of them is going to be the PowerPoint for this, um, for this session, and the other is going to be a resource. So if you want, you can go ahead and click on those now at any time or at any time throughout the um, uh, presentation to download those. Um, if you don't get them in time, if you don't get them downloaded in time or you forget, you know, we can always email that to you afterwards. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to our presenters today. Today we have uh, Dr. Margaret Patterson and Marty Finsterbush joining us. Uh, Dr. Patterson is currently a senior researcher with Research Allies for Lifelong Learning in Washington, D Washington D.C. Um, metro area. She partners with nonprofit organizations, post-secondary institutions, and state agencies applying research to support adult educators and learners. Uh, she led the award-winning Adult Learner Leadership in Education Services um, or Allies Research on Adult Learner Involvement uh, and Improving Their Program. Marty Finsterbush was hired as the first Executive Director for Value USA in 2001. It is the only national nonprofit adult literacy organization in the United States governed and operated by current and former literacy students. Currently, he is involved in conducting leadership trainings across the country through Adult Learner Leadership in Education Services uh, research on adult learner involvement and improving their program. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass that over to uh, Margaret. Okay, great. Thank you, Nicole, and welcome everyone uh, to this webinar. Um, as Nicole mentioned, our topic is improving programs through adult learner leadership, and um, we're particularly excited to talk with you about that today. Um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit with you about the findings from the Allies project uh, that Nicole mentioned just a moment ago, and then Marty's going to be sharing a lot with you about um, getting adult learners involved as leaders and leadership training. Um, and we also want to give a special thank you to our funder for the Allies project, uh, which was Dollar General Literacy Foundation. Um, a lot of you may uh, be aware of their support for adult education, and um, we were really grateful that, that they supported us in this project. So just by way of overview this afternoon, what we're going to be covering is uh, Marty's going to talk a little bit about what adult learner leadership means and why it matters. Um, and then I'm going to spend some time talking about findings from the Allies evaluation that we did across two years. Um, Marty will spend some time talking about some frequently asked questions that come up about adult learner leadership as he's talked with folks around the country. And then he'll give some more in-depth information on how a leadership training actually works. And we want to be sure to uh, 
keep plenty of time at the end to answer your questions um, that you may have. So please feel free to uh, use the questions feature or, um, or jot down your thoughts for the end. Uh, whichever works better for you. Um, and we'll try to pause periodically and uh, check for questions, clarifying questions, and then if it's something more in-depth, we'll definitely be sure to cover it at the end. Um, so let's go ahead on, and I'm going to pass it back over to Marty. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. So what does adult learner leadership mean? Well, let's start with what adult learner leadership isn't. And that is a group of adult learners coming together and meeting and doing something in your program, but you don't know what. I know we have student involvement. I know students are doing something, but I don't know what they're doing. That's not what we're talking about. What we're going to be talking about with student leadership is, is students integration into your program, helping improving your program. And so how does that work? Well, we've been doing student involvement in the United States now for almost 30 years. And the four areas that adult learners are really good at helping programs with is recruitment, retention, resources, and reform. So these four areas, adult learners are very good at helping programs. But how do you do all that? And so what? Um, and so it's happening, but it's radical around the country. Each program's re recreating the wheels, um, and it's not organized. So Value has developed a leadership training to actually bring that skills together and prove the program at the same time. And so what we've done in, what you're gonna be hearing is that we then um, pilot um, the control groups around the country, implementing student involvement leadership in some programs and not the other. And we have the two year report from that research project and Margaret's gonna be presenting that to you. The purpose of student involvement in this research is actually really to improve your programs. How do you utilize students' um, resources and skills that they have um, and help your program? At the same time, how do you teach the critical thinking skills to the adult learners that they need for their programs? Because in the past, we've been mostly focusing on giving the students the reading and writing skills, but it's some soft skills that they need to keep their jobs and their experience with. And so the definition of adult learner involvement and leadership is, is students are fully interactive into your program. Everything that your program can be doing, adult learners can be part of that. Um, and so that's values definition of adult learner leadership. So we go to the next page. Um, why does adult learnership matter? First of all, now with Riola, job training, job skills. And so here's a way to get skills to adult learners. At the same time, it works to improve your program. Like I said, adult learners are very good at recruitment, retention, resource, and reform, but how do you make that happen? And that's what we developed in this training to teach administrators how to work with their students to get that information. Um, the adult learners going through these trainings become advocates for your programs, but they learn these skills in a safe environment. How do they organize? How do they communicate with other people? How do they make um, decisions? And so that's when we're talking about student involvement and leadership is actually teaching them skills and how to teach them skills as a benefit your program. So, um, so how does it benefit your program? Well, we all know that you were a program won't survive. You don't be able to recruit students into your program. And we know the students are best way, but how do you do that? Your program has to change. How do you do that? Again, how do you invite your clientele to help you identify what areas that need to be improved in your program? Um, the other areas, um, in, um, re resources. Most programs don't look at their adult learners as a resource to the program and bring in resources to the program. But a lot of adult learners do have skills and they have family members. And so how do you bring them together? And again, in that training, that Value has developed, it does exactly do, does that. It helps the programs be able to evaluate their programs, be able to identify things that need to be improved, but also get into clientele to help improve that program. Um, again, later on, if you have questions specifically how we're going to talk about the training and the components in that training, I'm just trying to give you a feel at this point that adult learners 
um, are great, not just advocates, but actually can work within your program to help you improve your program to do the work that you're already doing. All right, I'm now going to turn it back over to Margaret. Okay, thank you, Marty. Um, so as, as we mentioned earlier, we wanted to tell you a little bit about the Allies Project. Um, that was a two-year evaluation from 2014 to 2016. And um, we were really honored to get an award from the National Literacy Coalition for that work um, in 2016. And so just a little bit about what that is. Um, we started with 306 adults uh, in the project, and we ended up with 133. Uh, we used um, a technique called random assignment um, so that we could assign programs within a state uh, to either participate um, in an intervention, in this case, the leadership training, or to serve as a control program. So when I talk about participants, I'm talking about the, the group of people, of adults and their programs that were selected at random to participate. And then if they were not selected at random, I'm calling them control um, learners. So I just want to clarify that terminology. Um, we were really happy to be funded by Dollar General Literacy Foundation um, to be able to partner to do this work. And you'll see on your screen there that there's a map. And the dark green states on the map are the states that we ended up going to. And I'm really hopeful that your geography is very good and you'll know which states those are. Um, but that's why I wanted to give you just a little bit of a visual there to do that. So what we did was we went out first in the very first year and collected some data. And then Marty came and started the intervention, which was the leadership training. And that training was followed by a leadership project that lasted about six to eight months, depending on um, the group. And then the next year, we went back and collected some more data so that we could look at it kind of pre-post to see were there differences for the groups that were participant groups, the participant adult learners versus the control adult learners. And for the control programs, nothing happened in between. Um, we just collected the data one year, collected the data the second year, and they did their business as usual. Um, in their programs. And as I said, the, of course, the intervention consisted of the training, the group project, and then Marty would work with them uh, as they had questions. So that's just a little bit about what the evaluation was about. Um, and I know that these webinars can be a little bit one directional, so we thought it might be kind of fun and, and get you involved. I know it's lunchtime and, and people start getting into that lunchtime slump otherwise. Uh, so we thought we'd do a poll. And um, Nicole has set up a poll for us. And we have three questions for you uh, based on uh, what's here. So our question is, how much do you think um, learners participating in leadership activities would make gains in critical thinking, speak up in class, and want to stay involved in the program after they finish the program. So we're just going to have you make your best guess. Um, and now, Nicole, you might need to help me here as far as so what I need to. They're working. Uh, everyone is kind of doing the poll right now. Let me see. It's still open. OK. Yeah, we'll give it another 20 seconds uh, to give everyone a chance. OK. I'm looking forward to the answers. <laughs> this is for the first question, making gains in critical thinking. Super. So we'll do two, two more polls after this. OK. All right, so I think just about everyone, or close to everyone, has voted. So I'll go ahead and close this poll down, and we'll share the results. OK. Margaret, can you see the, the uh, percentages, the results? 
I cannot. All I can see is is the PowerPoint. Okay. So um, not at all is five percent. A little is zero percent. Some is twenty five percent, and a lot is seventy percent for making okay. critical thinking. <laughs> all right. So so folks are expecting critical thinking games out of this. Super. All right. Let's go to the second one. And this is about speaking up in class. How much do you think that the participants in this project would, would be inclined to speak up in class? I'll give it about 20 more seconds. Most people have voted. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now and share it with everyone. So the answers for this is 0% uh, not at all, 15% um, said a little, 20% said some, and 65% said a lot. For speaking. Okay. All right. Pretty much the same balance there except for the, the not and the, the little. Okay. And then the third poll is uh, staying involved after the adult learner finishes the program and moves on. Will they still want to stay involved in the program? Okay, we'll give it about 20 more seconds for this one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share the results. Okay, so for this one, um, 0% said not at all, 15% said a little, 60% um, said some, and 25% said a lot. Okay, super. All right, thank you everyone for for voting. Um, and now we get to actually find out what happened. Um, so terrific. So by way of giving you a little bit of context for allies and the findings, I just thought I would share a couple of demographics here. And so you're looking at some infographics and you see a group in purple and a group in green. The purple graphic represents the number of participants um, who, who were actually participating uh, in the leadership training and projects. The green represents the control learners. So for example, you can see here that um, approximately seven in 10 participants by the end of the evaluation were fairly young, young being under 39 years old. And you can also see that um, a good number of them were English language learners, but when you look down at the control box, that a lot more of the control learners ended up being English language learners. Um, that's actually eight out of 10. So I'm not gonna read all of these to you, but I just wanted to give you a sense of, of what some of the demographics and uh, characteristics were uh, for these adult learners who were either participating, as you see in the purple, or were control learners in the green. And um, as you can see, there, there is a good amount of contrast. The, uh, the leadership ratings, the self ratings, were higher for participants than for control learners. And um, we also see that the, um, the participating learners tended to be pretty close to finishing up their program compared with the control learners. So that's a little bit of context there. I'm gonna go ahead and go on. 
Um, so what else did we find uh, at the final year um, in terms of, of program-related findings? Well, the participating adult learners found their program uh, services to be more helpful. Um, and actually, across time, the strength of that rating actually grew. They also um, noticed more the advantages of diversity in the program, and they saw themselves as slightly more involved in the program. Um, so going on from there, the assessment findings, we, as we actually gave them assessments in approaches to critical thinking, as we mentioned in the poll, and in writing. And we did find uh, through, the, through the evaluation that the participating adult learners did score slightly higher in critical thinking, and specifically in the reasoning components and the information processing components. So that's the answer to um, that first poll question. So those of you that, that picked up on that um, in the sum category are, are right on target there. And then, um, one of the uh, one of the next questions was about speaking up in class and as part of the evaluation we had the opportunity to go out and observe uh, interactions between staff and adult learners both in the participating programs and in the control programs and so what you're looking at here on this bar graph is um, some information about the interactions that we saw when we went out and did those observations. And specifically, this is the average minutes uh, that we observed. So if you look at the, the solid bars, um, the dark bar on the far left uh, is from the first year, and that represents the average amount of time that the staff was leading the interactions when we were looking at that class or that group setting. And you can see that's about almost 32 minutes. The learners were leading the interactions, talking more, if you will, for about 22 minutes. That's the first year. If you go over to the right-hand side of the graph and now look at those dark bars again, so now we see that the staff is talking on average about 20 minutes, and the learners are now up to 24 minutes. So we actually do see that the participating adult learners were talking more and, and leading the interaction more uh, than they had been before they actually had the training and did the project. If you look at the whiter bars with the patterns, you can see there um, the really tall bar on the left under 2014 represents the control staff, and they were talking a lot. They were leading interaction a lot. Um, and then if you look at the, at the shortest one there where it says almost 13 minutes, that's the control learners, and they were talking just a little bit. Go to the next year, and we see that um, the control staff wasn't talking quite as much as they had been in the first year. That was down to about 37 minutes, but the control learners were talking even less than they had in, um, in the original year at about six minutes each. So we do see quite a bit of difference, and so um, those of you that, that picked that in your poll, um, clap yourself on the back. You picked it right. Okay. And then um, one last bit of information about um, the, the final year uh, quantitative findings that we had was just looking to see whether staff and adult learners saw what was going on um, in the, in the uh, participating programs the same. Because I know as, as a former staff person that I probably had different perceptions than the perceptions my students would have had as to what was going on. And so we asked them pretty much the same questions and just wanted to see did they agree or did they disagree. And that's what this bar here at the bottom is telling us. So one of the things that we learned was that the staff was just more comfortable with learner leadership um, and its benefits than adult learners were. Um, perhaps not a surprise, uh, but that the adult learners um, rated learner collaboration 
and being involved in the program more a lot higher than staff did. And so as we look at this graph here, um, the adult learners are in the darker bars and the staff are in the lighter colored bars uh, for this. And so the question that we asked both groups, the first question that we asked them, you know, would you want to keep in touch with staff after um, you leave the program? And that's, that's a great question to ask folks. And then we asked the, the uh, staff, do you think they would want to keep in touch uh, with you all after they leave the program? And as you can see at the bottom of the graph, the agreement was pretty close. Pre pretty much everybody thought that that would be the case. But when it came to volunteering to help out or staying on to lead an activity afterwards, the staff had very, very different perceptions than the adult learners themselves did. So I'm sharing that with you partly because that was our third poll question, but also because you can see that um, there's, there's quite a bit of difference between what staff thought and what the adult learners thought. Okay, so moving along, I'd like to share a little bit about the qualitative findings from the project. Um, and just to let you know, that if you're interested in, in more detail on this, uh, Nicole has uh, attached a handout on this that gives highlights. It's a, a research article uh, from the COABE journal. And in addition to that, Marty has a wealth of reports on the Value USA website. Um, so feel free to dive into that. Today we're just getting at some quick highlights and we'll move along. So we asked the learners um, in the participating projects. What did you feel that you contributed to the project? And then what did you feel that you gained from the project? Both of those very important questions. And um, one of the things that they talked about over and over again was some changes in how they acted, how they, their behavior. And that one of them, or several of them, talked about getting more involved, getting involved in the program. And I'm not going to read these quotes to you, um, but I think these are good examples of um, the types of things that they were saying about being involved. Um, other types of changes in action or behavior, uh, they really thought it was important to share opinions and ideas. That's something that, that they felt that they gained from this. And I really loved what Manuela said here. It's very important to think first and then develop and support your ideas. And I think a lot of us would agree with that, that that's um, something important to be able to do. Um, another thing that they felt that they gained was getting organized. And I don't know about your students, but I know that um, adult learners that I've worked with in the past that organizing their work, being able to organize what they do can sometimes be a real challenge. And so, um, as you can see in the quotes here, uh, these folks are talking about becoming organized and um, being able to plan their schedule, plan events, and and get things together for whatever type of project you're working on. Okay, so then we come to program effects. All right, so what were the programs getting out of this? Um, well, one of the first things that they got was the option to do fundraisers, to get donations, to raise funds um, of some type uh, for their program. And that could have been a special event, um, that they sold tickets for. It could have been going out and asking for donations. There were lots of different ways um, that, that programs went about this. And so they were able to raise some funds that they needed and that was important to them. Um, others talked about uh, long-term involvement of adult learners. And um, Bertha, Bertha's quote here is very interesting because she kept saying, it's still happening. We're still working on this. And, um, and in that particular program, uh, they probably are. They were working on communication efforts, and that was important to her uh, that it would be an ongoing thing, not just a one-off experience. Um, and then other programs worked on recruitment and outreach. Now imagine, if you will, 
that you could have your adult learners help figure out how to recruit other adult learners, or perhaps how to recruit tutors or staff to the program. And what might that look like? And so the folks here are talking about what that looked like for them and how they contributed. They were going out and getting the word out. They were going out and recruiting tutors. And um, it meant a lot to them um, to be able to do that and not only to make connections in the community, but to have people respond to them. It meant an awful lot, like Lourdes is saying here, they listen to me and they came to tutor. And when she said that, I, I can't show that on here, um, but she just lit up when she said that, that they listened to me and they came. Um, and that meant a lot to her. Okay, um, just one last slide or so, and then we'll move on to some questions. We did a, a look very quickly at outstanding leaders within these projects. And there were 60 participating adult learners who ended up being considered outstanding leaders. And the way they got selected for that, um, for that analysis was on the leadership rating, we said you can rate yourself as a leader on a scale from one to 10, where 10 is an excellent leader, one is uh, don't really have a clue what being a leader is about. And if they rated themselves from eight to 10 on that scale, they could be an outstanding leader, or if their staff recommended them um, as an outstanding leader on our survey uh, questionnaire. And so um, just a little bit here in this graphic on their characteristics, uh, we, we looked at them as to whether they were experienced leaders or whether they were new leaders. And one of the things that, that we noticed was a difference in how much time they were spending in the program. So here's attendance for those of you that are concerned about what's the impact on attendance. That gives us a little bit of information there. Um, these experienced, or excuse me, these outstanding leaders were mostly women. Um, they tended to be quite young, uh, particularly the experienced ones. And um, very high proportion of English language learners in this particular eva evaluation. Okay, so what did staff find out of all of this? Because again, this is, this is important to hear their perspective. And the benefits that they talked about were, you know, making a difference really matters. And so they talked about program accomplishments, uh, planning and advocacy, and promoting retention of adult learners. And obviously they can't go on to make outcomes unless they're retained in the program, unless they're actually there. And so we have a quote here from an instructor and I'll let you just take a moment to, to read through that quote on the slide. Um, but re what really jumps out here is, is this particular instructor felt that adult learners were really able to get the job done. Um, and, and that person really praised them for being able to do that. Um, another uh, staff person talked about, in, in a communications project, talked about um, how beneficial the adult learners being involved was just in general. And, and obviously as a whole list of skills um, that, that those learners were able to pick up. Um, and I'll let you take a look at those. And then um, last but not least, um, an instructor talked about um, how it promoted uh, retention and achievement and how important um, that was to, I don't recall if it was him or her, but to that instructor. Okay, so that's quite a bit about the evaluation. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it back over to Marty and he's gonna walk us through some frequently asked questions and um, how that goes. So Marty, take it away. Okay, so first question we always get, well, I've tried student involvement and it didn't work. What we learned in student involvement is that you don't just grab a student or whatever and say, here you go, or this is your project. Um, it has to be integrated into your program and it has to have meaning. Um, Otherwise, why be there? 
Um, or we pick one or two people and say, this is the leader and here you go. And then they move on. And so to get student involvement and what we've learned works is project-based. There's a reason to come together and you need to accomplish something and has a beginning and an end. Um, it cannot ever go on forever. No one can commit forever. Even your student leaders, your best student leader cannot give forever. But by developing project-based to do, you can bring new people in and keep it fresh and going. Um, and that's one of the things that we learned that needs to happen if you're going to have successful student involvement in your program um, is being beginning and an end to whatever you're doing. Um, and then the issue here is the one that you saw that adult learners are too busy to be involved in your program. Our research shows that it's not necessarily true. What it is is people don't think to ask us to be involved. Um, you see volunteers, you ask volunteers to do something, but we don't necessarily see adult learners as volunteers. And a lot of us can do things and be willing to do more things if somebody would ask us. So the trick is creating a place within your organization where adult learners can be involved and learn these skills. Um, and then how much time does it take to get student involvement in, in your program staff time? Again, you should be doing recruitment, retention, resources, and reform in your organization. And so you need to be doing this work already. You need to be bringing resources in. You need to be able to figure out ways to keep students in your program. You need to find ways to get other people of knowing about your program. And so student involvement, you should be doing this already. So it's, it's restructuring your time a little bit, but not overwhelming your time. Um, so there are the then three questions. All right. How does student involvement um, tie to job training? So you're giving skills to adult learners um, in your program. It's a safe environment for, for them to try and to learn. And I'm going to be walking you through the training, teaching you and showing you some of the skills that they will be learning through the training. But this senior project. Your, your project that you're doing is the plans for them to practice communication skills, organizing skills, diversity training in a setting of your literacy program. But at the same time, it's not just anything. It's something that will help improve your program that your program needs to be doing already. Um, and then the feeling that the adult learner gets back, it's they have a self-value and confidence that then goes back into the workforce. Um, so then it says, how does student involvement tie to evaluating your program? Um, in this training, we work with the students and staff together, and we ask them, what do you love about your program? Handing a piece of paper to your adult learner and say, here, fill this out, you're not going to get the real thing. But having other adult learners asking that question, what do you love about this program? You're going to know what your students like about your program. And then also collecting the data on well, what needs to be improved? What would make this program even better? And collecting that kind of data from the adult learners gives the administrator the, what you need to know to look at your program. And then how can um, you bring new resources to your program? Adult learners have access to a lot of resources that people don't know about. Um, doing this training, um, we do a section on collecting resources and skills. And someone says, well, my brother's the mayor of the town. Is that a resource? Yes. But the program didn't know that his brother was the mayor of the town. Um, another section, another person's family owns a business. They own a, a produce stand. So that family was able to bring in stuff to be donated, wrapped up in baskets, and raffled off. So there's a lot of resources that are sitting with the adult learners, but no one ever asked them. And so, yes. The adult learners can bring a lot of resources and awareness to your program. It's how you utilize it and then how do you ask it. All right, um, Margaret, okay, can we? Mar Marty, can, can we maybe just take a breath for a moment and see if anybody has any questions about all of the materials that we've presented so far? I'm not able to see the, uh, the questions bar, so I'll re rely on Nicole to help us out here. Okay, so we have a couple of questions here. Um, 
The first, um, Marty, this is directed towards you. Uh, what is your opinion about asking students to uh, asking a student to join a local board of directors? So, yes, but it has to be done right. So, for example, in the past, people would grab a student and say, be on the board. And it, then I've heard, well, we tried that and didn't work out. Well, then I asked some basic questions. Were they the only one on the board? The only adult learner on the board? Um, yes. Well, it's better when you have more than one, so they, there's a team. Two, has that student ever sat on a board before? Um, no. Well, then did you give them a mentor? Did you teach them how to read a budget? Do, um, and so when you go through and they say, no, 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 now you know why it didn't work out. Um, so if you're going to put students on your board, you have to do some prep work prior to that happen, or it won't be successful for the student and it won't be successful for yourself. Okay, so the next question we have, um, are the skills taught in the process of, uh, in the process of learners actually doing a project? Uh, for example, on the on-job training, or, or is it a formal training for the learners? They learn it in the training, and then it's practiced by doing with their programs. And so in the next section, we get into what how does the training work, you'll see some of the skills that they start to learn. And so they start to learn it in the training, and then apply it to the program. And then we have one more Which question. Which is transferable to work. I'm oh, sorry. Then it's transferable to work, please. Okay, and then we have one more question here. If you ask a student to be on a board, what role should they have? The role is as equal to any other board member, not less than, um, than in it. And again, so someone needs to prep up to make sure they understand how to read the reports and what's going on. Um, and again, by having two adult learners on the board instead of one, is they don't look at say, well, Mary, it's just you. Or um, when there's two, they both can look at each other. I don't know what they're saying. That doesn't sound right. We feel, so they can, two board members can say, we feel, instead of just saying, well, it's just you, Mary. And so um, they should be as an equal board member like everybody else. Okay, and that's all for questions for now. Okay. Okay, great. All right. So the leadership so, training. <laughs> yes. So this training was developed um, with curriculum specialists, and we went to different states. We got state groups, and we got student leaders. And in the first wave of this, we actually locked people in a room for two days and say, if we're going to have a national training at teaching adult learner leader skips, what needs to be in there? And so that was the first cut of it. And then we start pilot testing the training around the country and doing it in different places and scaling it down and working on it and creating it. And now we got this training down to two days for four hour sessions. And so what happens is we bring adult learners and practitioners together. This is not just for adult learners. You have to have staff and students together working together on this. And so the first day is really more informational. And so we start off easy because we want to engage the stuff learners because they're going to be coming to that training like, what am I getting into? And staff is nervous, oh, what are we getting into here? And so we start out easy with questions. And we start saying, what is student involvement? And we collect that and we put it on flip charts. There's no wrong answer. So whatever you say is right. And the students get to see their words in front of everybody and the staff get to see their words there. And then after we move on what is student involvement, it's a section called Get to Know Your Program. And we start collecting out, what do you love about your program? You're getting direct data from your um, um, students, what they love about your program, which you can share with funders. And then the next phase is we start collecting what needs to be improved about this program. This is students and staff together. So together they're saying, well, maybe we need a class on Wednesdays, or we need daycare, or we need whatever, we need books. Um, the program staff say, well, we don't have any money to keep the program open, whatever. So all the needs that would make this program is listed, shared by everybody. And then after we do that, we teach structure. 
it's fun. And I do this as I can hit what's a flip. I mean, what's a organizational structure chart? And we give them an example of a local literacy program. Now, students, you get together in groups and you draw a flow chart of how this organization work. Staff, you get over in a group and you draw a flow chart how this organization works. And it's fun watching staff try to figure out how their own organization works. Um, and so the students are learning about structures. And what the skill they're learning here is every organization has a structure. So your employer has a structure. So when you're working at your job, if you know how it works, you can get things done. If you learn structures, so you have a problem with the school, you can learn that the school has a structure. How does that work? So you have a problem. Is that something that goes to the director or the president? Or does it go to the secretary? If you know the structure, you know how to then deal with issues. And so we're teaching adult learner structures, infrastructure, by using your own program that they're operating in. All right. Then once they've learned structures and we have that list of all the things they would like to do, we start teaching about prioritizing. Remember the four R's, recruitment, retention, resources, and form? Every program must be doing them four things or their doors are going to shut down. If you're not doing that recruitment, you don't have students, you're done. You don't have resources, you're done. If you can't change, you're done. Um, and so all four of these things, so the project, so what we do is remember the things that they would love to see improve. The students and staff have to give R's to them because if they don't have an R, then you shouldn't be doing them as a project, All right? And then after they learn about prioritizing, we also continue to say, okay, you have all these things that the program wants to do, but what about the needs? You can't do everything. So think about it. You're going to prioritize one, two, three, and four, and you're going to prioritize these things by needs. What does the program really need? And that's students and staff together. So now the students are helping you prioritizing what needs to be done for your program with staff. But now, after they learned about prioritizing with need, what about time? Because just because the program needs something doesn't mean anybody wants to do it. Have you ever tried to say, we really got this, and you don't have staff willing to do it, and you don't have students willing to do it? So by prioritizing it with time, you see where the energy is of the adult learners to do one of the projects. So you identify the need and then you identify the energy in your program to make that um, happen. Um, and then that's the first day we're collecting all that data. The second day we're teaching about what prioritizing meaning skills they have. So example, you'd be amazed how many skills your adult learners have. So we have the adult learners and staff together write down what skills they have. And they collect that data. And then we have this, um, then after that we have them write down um, what resources they have available to them. And you have to explain what's a resource. Well, for example, skill is if you can drive, a resource if you own a car. And so we again have the students and the staff write down all the resources about them. And it's an eye opener for the staff and the students because they get to learn about each other. Oh, wow, you cook too? I also cook. And so you build that bonding, but they create for the administrator, and you now have a list of resources that you can tap into to help you, your program. Oh, wow, so and so's daughter is a CEO of a local company. I didn't know that. Oh, wow, this, fam this student owns a restaurant in, my, in the town. And so you actually collect up a lot of resources for your program. Then once we learn about teaching them about how to collect resources and skills to handle projects, we work on about supports and barriers. So what's that? So we teach adult learners normally when there's a crisis, oh my God, what do I do? Well, what we do is say the project that they decide to pick on, they have to list down three barriers. What would keep adult learners from doing this project? And that's staff and students together. And then they take all their skills and all their resources they have and pick through them to figure out how to get on the other side of the barrier and list them out. And what's happening is you're teaching the adult learners how to step back and how to collect them skills and resources and how to get over barriers. And so, but what you're really doing is they're developing a game plan to how to implement a project within your program. Um, 
And then also, what resources would you, so they'd be collecting, what other, who else is also involved in this program? Who also would want what this done? So they're collecting up that kind of skills. Um, then after that, we start creating a project. They're gonna have to name it, a timeline it, who else has to be involved in it. So time we walk out of there on the second day, you actually have in your hands a blueprint exactly what they're gonna do and when and how it's gonna be done by whom, staff, students, and so forth, and how to make that happen. Um, and so that is the leadership training that we do. It takes two four-hour days to make that happen. Right? Um, I don't know how to collect questions on the internet. Okay, so um, our next uh, phase here, I guess, is to ask what questions you have, uh, either for Marty or for myself. And again, Nicole is is going to yes. check our question box, and um, we'll give it our best shot in answering it. Okay, so we just have one additional uh, question, and it was left over from a little bit earlier. Um, do you have a learner advisory board? And I think this one's for Marty. Do I personally have a learner advisory board? I have a board of trustees that are adult learners that are my bosses. Um, I am also a adult learner myself um, in a program at one time. So advisory board um, for other organizations is fine. That's what these, I guess, the projects can be. But um, my board is adult learner, so it's not advisory. They're running it. Okay, um, I think that's all we have for questions right now. If you want to give it a minute, maybe somebody will type something in. But that's all we have for now. Margaret, do you have any question for clarifying? Because I know I threw a lot of people really fast. Do you have any clarifying questions that you might have? No, I, I think you covered the components of the leadership training really well. And, and I realize that this is a lot of information coming at you really quickly. And um, so it does take a little bit of time to digest and to think about. And please know that, um, you know, Marty, whether you have more questions or not, we're happy to answer them today. We do have um, a little bit of time left so so we can stay together. But um, Marty and I both have our contact information here. So if you are interested in more information on the leadership trainings, um, Marty would be happy to talk with you. And if you're um, interested in the evaluation or if you're, you're looking at, at some of the issues that I have up here about evaluating um, how, you, how you recruit or retain adult learners, feel free to contact me. Um, we have given you some handouts today that I hope you'll take some time to kind of look through at your leisure. And um, please do look at the resources online that, that we've pointed you to. Um, there's quite a bit of good information out there. And it, I, I hope, our hope is that it will help you um, think about how adult learner leadership could work in your program and what that would take for you to put it together. Okay, um, so we actually do have some questions now. So I'm okay, going to read super. them out. Okay, so we have a, mar a question here. Um, we ask each new board member to make an annual commitment to fundraising uh, and donating personally. Uh, do you recommend waiving this requ uh, requirement for student board members? The question becomes is how much are you talking about? Everyone can give up a dollar for something. So a, a dot learner can donate money to your board. My board members need to donate to the board. And so as long as it's not outrageous and it's within a person's range, again, if there is a, a soda on this table and a dot learner really wants that soda, they're going to find a dollar. And so that board member can do that. And if they can't, because they literally don't have any money, then they can donate their time to work on a fundraiser event. Um, adult learners are very effective in raising money um, and helping out and getting stuff. So, no, they they adult learners can help donate. They can donate money, and they can also help you raise money. 
Okay, we have another question here. One of the largest obstacles our learners have is lack of time. How did you overcome this to provide the training? So the programs, I asked the programs to find adult learners that are been in the program, that are coming near to the end of the program or been in it for a while and they're not brand new. And that um, want to, that they can see that want to get more involved. And, or if they have an adult learner that's already finished their program, that come back and visit them and say hi. Because when an adult learner comes back and say hi, what they're saying to you is, I want to belong. And programs don't make a place for adult learners. Again, there's time commitments is on pressure on everybody. That's why you do, again, project based, because then people can come and go, borrowing their energy. If you have, um, and here's, Mary Smith is now on the board. Mary Smith is committed for three years to be on the board for a three-year term. But if Mary Smith was part of a project, she can then help out for six months and then come back again in another six months to help with a new project. So using that way for time streets, more students can be involved using less time. And so maybe a pro we ask all projects to try to be under nine months. So some projects can be three months or six weeks, and other projects can be a little bit longer. So that's why we highly recommend project-based so more students can be involved and not utilize their time, and more students can be involved in it. Again, here's that adult learner. They're committing for three-year commitment. How many people can, are willing to commit for three years to something? All right, we have another uh, question here. Uh, do you have uh, data on if and how student recruitment is affected when using adult learners to assist? Um, your researchers, so, yes. so, so the question, is, I just want to make sure I understand the question. The question is um, how student recruitment is affected? Yes. Is that right, Nicole? Yeah, okay. if, if so, and how. If and how, yes. So we did actually have um, programs in the evaluation that that was their goal, was to go out and to recruit additional adult learners to the program. And, and so the staff and the adult learners worked on that together. Um, and you may recall um, probably about six or seven slides back, uh, there was a, a young man that talked about how they took flyers out around the community. They went and they talked with people in the community. Um, and yes, so the, the short answer is yes. In that particular situation, they did find um, that they were able to recruit additional adult learners. And um, part of it was that that personal contact from from adult learners themselves, but part of it was also uh, the impression that it made when those adult learners took those materials out and said, you know, this is important to us. We we are benefiting at, by being adult learners, and so by by we want to recruit others so that so that they know. I one of the women said, you know, I want to tell them how great a program this really is. And um, that meant a lot to her to be able to do that. So yes, we do have some evidence um, from that uh, in our reports. And I would refer you to the reports where they talk about the different types of projects, whether they were doing recruitment, communications, fundraising, uh, whatever they decided to work on in, in their particular program that was important to them. There's lots of information about what the specific outcomes were in that evaluation. So we do have some of that evidence for you. All right, so we have a couple more questions here. Um, uh, again, with uh, the adult learners on the boards, um, are you saying an adult learner on the board would have the same input as non-adult learner? Uh, for example, having a say in salary or hiring. Yes, um, why not? Um, adult learners might not have administrative experience, but how else are they also going to learn? And if they're on a board, they should be equal to everybody else. 
Um, and then they can get an insight. Like, for example, I know for a while back, New Mexico actually used adult learners to help evaluate teachers before they hired them for their program. So that has already happened um, in that area. And if the adult learners are on the board and there's a board committee evaluating who should be the director and that adult learners on that committee, they should have equal rights. I, I it just, yes, they should. Okay, so we have another question here. Can you talk about ways that programs have used adult learners to help get specific feedback on how to improve or enhance their program? Oh, yes. So in this, we right in this training, that's what happens. So in this training, when we list out um, what would you like to see improved, we actually are creating a list of all the things in that program that the students and staff sees that needs to be improved. But you can't do all of them. So then we teach prioritizing so they pick out. So the students are actually helping you meet that area. But what I'm handing to the state direct, I mean, what I'm handing to the students, I mean, to the administrator is a list of areas that their clients and their own staff feel that needs to be improved in that program. And so they can use their own energy to help improve different areas. So they're getting a direct feedback on what needs to be improved. All right, so we have a, a question here. Um, I am totally new to adult learning. How should I start a new group of learners? All right, so in your program, you need to bring them together and you need to, as a talk thing, and ask them questions. What do you like? What would you like to see change? I'll be honest with you, we're gonna, we're waiting to hear from Dollar General to do another round of trainings because um, we're training, a tr we're creating a manual to train people to do these trainings so I don't have to run around the country to do them. Um, so we actually have some openings to actually do this training for some programs. So if you're interested in, and get it for your program. For now, it's still free training. Um, it's a really in-depth training, and your program will be improved after this training. Our research proves it. Um, so again, it's talking with your students first, um, and then finding out where their energies and interests is. If you pick the project for them, say, here, this is what I want you to do, the odds are it's not going to work out. And so it needs to be a team picking. And so that's why I re recommend if you're doing it totally raw, you need to sit down with a group of students and first start talking with each other. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have right now. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for, um, for participating this afternoon. I think we've made excellent use of of the time and um, again we've got our contact information here if you have any questions or um, want more information either about the evaluation or about leadership and and the trainings from Marty's end so thank you everybody for your participating today thank you so much everyone um, and thank you Marty and Margaret thank you so much for uh, joining us today uh, I did want to mention a couple of things. Um, there's going to be a survey uh, immediately following the webinar. Uh, please take the time to fill it out. It's pretty important for us so we uh, know how to refine uh, what we do and we use it uh, a lot. We use your feedback um, in order to make our webinars um, better. Um, if you are interested in the adult learner leadership uh, training, or an interested in attending one, uh, there is a question on the survey that we included. So uh, please, we just ask that you indicate your interest level in, in this training. Um, I also want to uh, mention that uh, we have a, an excellent opportunity for your adult learners to um, learn a little bit about leadership um, at the upcoming uh, conference. Uh, we have Adult Learner Day on Wednesday, May 9th, and Marty is actually going, going to be uh, not only in attendance, but he's going to be pretty much uh, uh, helping us run it um, and doing some sessions on advocacy. It's a really great opportunity for your adult learners. Um, so uh, that information is on our website, uh, floridaliteracy.org. It's one of the first few items on that first page. So 
if you if you're interested in sending some of your adult learners, I highly recommend um, signing them up. It is a free event and it does come with lunch. Um, I also want to mention that on the con uh, during the conference, um, uh, Margaret and uh, Marty will be having a session on uh, on adult learner leadership, uh, the research on Friday, May 11th um, in the morning. I'm not sure exactly what time, but um, that should that will be in the uh, conference uh, sessions page. Um, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's uh, as a part of the conference. So um, if you're uh, planning on signing up for the conference or you're thinking about signing up for the conference, I highly recommend you uh, take a look at that going to attending that session. You can meet them in person, <laughs> Margaret and Marty in person, and ask them some questions. Um, OK, I think that's going to be it. Um, like we said earlier, your handouts are going to be on uh, on this um, on your uh, control panel, so you can go ahead and, and download those now before we sign off. Um, please visit uh, floridaliteracy.org uh, to uh, find out about future uh, opportunities. We have in-person trainings and we have uh, other uh, virtual trainings like webinars and online courses. Um, and I think that's going to be about it for today. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, and again, thank you uh, for to Marty and Margaret for joining us as well. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.